Hi, and welcome to the Oikos Family Podcast. I'm Sonia Wood, and this is Season 3, Episode 9, which is going to be Part 8 of the Abundant Life book. I have been sharing each part of the Abundant Life book through this podcast series, and we're now on Part 8, which is all about detoxifying the home, or detoxing the home. I don't know if detoxifying is a word, actually. Anyway, I'll start in this section of the book talking to you about chemicals and getting the, the chemicals out of our home, literally our pantry and so on, as well as food and so on and so forth. And then I talk about baking bread and making wholesome homemade bread. In actual fact, when I wrote that book, we weren't yet into sourdough bread making, and I'm since into sourdough bread making, and so now it's what was just everyday bread making is now everyday sourdough bread making. So we advanced, I think, because I think sourdough bread is even more healthy. So that, you know, it just shows, it just takes years and years and years of getting one thing in place and then moving to the next and the next. So that's what I hope you will do if you listen to these um, podcasts. I hope that you can just pick one thing out of it that you can then get um, instilled into your home into your lifestyle and then when that's just going along without even really noticing it then do the next thing that's that is what I really want to encourage you with because it can just seem like too much you know it's just so much at once and that's why I actually put these this book into parts part one part two part three so people can jump back and forth so it's not written like a chapter novel you know as such it's more um written in such a way that you can jump to whichever part you feel you need at the time, you know, in your journey of life. So I don't think I should talk too much more at the intro of this because I'd like to just drop in this next part that I have narrated out of the audiobook and then you can listen to that and you can, as I say, take from it whatever it is that you might find useful to yourselves. So thanks for joining me in today's podcast, and I hope you enjoy this next part of Abundant Life. Part 8. Detoxifying the Home When detoxifying our home, we started with the most important room, the pantry. Go through your pantry and remove anything which has additives, harmful chemicals, preservatives, etc., such as the following. Cereals, ready-made instant food, tin food with additives, not all tin foods are chemically laden. Milk-flavoured powders, concentrates for juices, etc. Just look at the label and you will soon discover how many harmful chemicals are perhaps hiding in your pantry, which sadly you are putting into your body, perhaps. Look at the ingredients label of everything in your pantry. If you see chemical numbers and obvious chemical names of ingredients, many of them could be harmful. It is not possible for me to include here a list of which chemicals are harmful or not, so perhaps do some of your own research on this. Some items in your pantry may have as many as 10 of these added harmful chemicals. In other instances, the numbers will not even be listed, but research has shown us, in packaged breads for example, that there are many harmful chemicals, even when they're not listed. However, do not worry that you will not always know if there are or are not harmful chemicals in food items you purchase, because as you proceed through this change of lifestyle, educating yourself along the way, you will learn what to avoid. A general rule of thumb we have learned is to try, as far as is practically possible, to avoid foods which have been highly processed, You may question that many foods these days are highly processed, and you're right, but you can slowly make the change to eating as much as possible which you have grown. You should also source organic food items which you cannot grow yourself. Find who supplies organic foods, as in vegetables and meats and other food items, in your area. Ask around until you get answers. It is amazing that once you start out on this journey, you make so many discoveries of things you never knew existed before. Do not be alarmed at thinking your groceries are going to be too expensive if you buy organic, because we have proven this not to be so. 
For example, having found a source of organic flour which cost us between two and four rand more a bag, more than the standard common brands of highly processed flour, which have had most of the nutrients stripped from them. This extra we spend on flour goes a very long way because our growing young adult son could easily consume four slices of bought bread and still be hungry, whereas when he eats our homemade bread made from organic flour, he is very full and satisfied after only two slices. This is because he has ingested so many nutrients, vitamins and minerals through having eaten organic flour bread, which has had a minimal amount of processing. So one actually saves by eating organically, not to mention how much healthier your family will be with this lifestyle. Since my recovery from cancer, I have not stepped foot into a doctor's room. And that is now going on four years. Our family have had one bout of flu which lasted three days, whereas others we know were very ill in bed for two weeks with the same strain of flu. Our health has so dramatically improved that we could not ever consider going back to the way we used to eat. I believe organic food has contributed largely to our healing and the abundant health that we currently enjoy. As mentioned previously, we strongly suggest that you take one step at a time and remove that which is easiest for you to master before moving on to the next do's and don'ts. I have made a do's and don'ts list later on in this book. Do not be overwhelmed by the extent of changes you will need to make. Do not think you can achieve this in the space of days, weeks or months. We are already four years into adjusting our lifestyle and are still making necessary changes. It took us three years to cook in glass po- cooking pots instead of our previous cookware, as we learned that cooking in glass was a healthier way of cooking. It took us so long to make this change because we could not find glass cookware before that. However, because our focus was on trying to source glass cookware, one day someone told us that they had seen some glass pots in Pretoria, so we made the necessary inquiries and acquired a beautiful set of glass pots. What a delight to cook in glass cookware! And the added blessing is to know how much healthier it is for us to be cooking in glass rather than metal. It is well worth also investing in a bread maker. Although I know a number of women who enjoy making their bread every day by hand, it takes me three minutes to put the ingredients into our bread maker, push the start button, and an hour and a half later we have lovely fresh bread ready for the table. I strongly believe in using time savers so that we have time to spend on other necessary functions. My bread maker is a wonderful time saver for me, as is my dishwasher. However, this does not mean I no longer make bread by hand. I still enjoy making handmade bread. We also invested in a Kenwood chef with a pasta attachment. This enables us to use our organic flour and free-range eggs to make one kilogram of pasta. It takes me five minutes to mix the pasta in the Kenwood bowl, another seven minutes to put the pasta through the pasta attachment, and then about ten minutes to cook. I have the pot of water come into the boil while I'm making the pasta through the machine. This way, the entire one kilogram of pasta takes me about twenty minutes to make and cook. Again, the value of nutrients in this pasta is so much more than if I bought a packet of pasta from the shop. Obviously, because of the organic flour we've used, so we eat less volume of organic homemade pasta than what we would eat if we were consuming bought pasta. All these expenses of bread makers, Kenwood chefs, etc. may seem a bit daunting. That is why I keep emphasizing the importance of getting one thing mastered at a time. The outlay of finances, however, is worth every penny when we consider what a huge difference it makes to our health. At the same time, it imparts good living habits into our children, becoming a natural part of their upbringing. Hopefully, they will carry it on to their own families. And now for some household tips to get your home free of the baddies, those harmful chemicals. Floor cleaners. Half fill a bucket with water and add one large cap or two tablespoons of vinegar and one large scoop, four tablespoons, of borax. You can add a little bit of bicarb for the scrub and a few drops of Johnson's baby oil for the shine. Add a few drops of hydrogen peroxide or iodine to sterilize. You may find another oil to give shine. We haven't as yet, 
so we use the baby oil, even though we wonder if it is completely pure. This is why this new lifestyle is taking us time to master, because whenever we hear of a better alternative to what we are currently doing or using, we switch to that. Also, I cannot always find borax, so then I simply leave it out and mix vinegar and bicarb in the water. Window cleaners. Mix one quarter vinegar and three quarters water. Add a good squeeze of lemon juice. Let's think about this for a moment. Consider the window cleaner which is maybe in your home currently. Consider what the ingredients are. They're mostly chemicals. Now think about you cleaning your windows. You are spraying that window with cleaner and breathing in the chemicals, which will have to find a place to be stored in your body, perhaps the brainstem. Then years later we wonder why there are more and more people that we are hearing about being diagnosed with a tumour on the brain. And by the way, you're not only breathing in those chemicals, the largest organ of your body, your skin, is absorbing them, which is even more harmful. But now, instead, you can clean your windows with some fresh-smelling lemon juice. If that gets absorbed into your lungs or skin, good. Lemon is exceptionally good for your health. Bath and toilet cleaners. I keep a bottle with the same mixture as the floor cleaner in the bathrooms. And I also just keep a small bottle of borax or bicarb for scrubbing. Here is another useful tip, not on the topic of household cleaners, more on the topic of body cleansers. I keep a bottle of Epsom salts in the bathroom, and so now our whole family has a habit of putting a scoop of Epsom salts into their bath. This is an excellent cell cleanser, and very good for pain management of any kind. For pain, however, you need to use more, a handful or more. Do not use too much on a regular basis for general detoxing though. A scoop for us is about a tablespoon size. Kitchen countertops and general surface cleaning. I have a spray bottle with a few drops of hydrogen peroxide to about 100 mils of water. Dishcloth hygiene. We soak our dishcloths in the evening in the kitchen sink and bleach. This keeps them sterile and inhibits the awful collection of germs which gather on old dishcloths. I simply bought a few extra dishcloths so that I could circulate them and always have very clean dishcloths daily. Washing machine detergents. Use three scoops of borax. This is what our grandparents used. If you want to be a little lenient on this, you can use two scoops of regular detergent and one scoop of borax. That is what I did. I also found some organic washing machine liquid at a health shop nearby. I use that when I can't find borax. Cosmetics and personal toiletries. So many have asked us if we still use the shop-bought shampoos, soaps, moisturizer, makeup products and so on. We have found many shop-bought products have an incredibly long list of harmful chemicals in them. So we have slowly searched for more natural replacements for these. We found the health shop in our village sells healthy organic makeup products. And now a few general kitchen tips. Kitchen containers. We have slowly converted to glass for all our containers, such as our homemade rusks, muesli, biscuits and so on. By the way, bought biscuits have an unusually large amount of harmful chemicals in them. So I bought Missy a biscuit maker because she uses organic flowers and natural flavorings such as plain chocolate, coconut, nuts, and so on. We now have the blessing of our glass jars filled with homemade biscuits. Again, you need only consume one or two of them because of their high level of nutrients. You feel satisfied very quickly. Kitchen appliances. I've already mentioned our bread maker and our Kenwood chef. If you want to make your own pasta, I'm not sure of any other electric pasta maker. But we also have a handmade pasta maker which we enjoy using, even though it's more time consuming. A good quality juicer, need I say any more? Water filter. I could go as far as saying this should be the first and most important item you purchase if you are really serious about making health changes to your daily living. There are a vast variety of water filters on the market, so it is best to do research and decide which one you can afford. A glass kettle. This is another very good investment. The plastic kettles are very bad for your health because the boiling water draws the very strong plastic chemicals out 
into the water and then we drink those chemicals when we have hot drinks. Glass cooking pots, just a healthier way to cook. An additional item which has been greatly valuable in our kitchen is our grain mill. We sourced an organic whole grain cellar and now ground grain every morning for our bread. It cannot be better than that. To be grinding our own organic grain and then making bread from that. I know a few people who have grain mills and they all have had the same experience as I in that it takes only a few minutes to grind the grain needed for a loaf of bread so it really does not add much to your time in preparing a whole organic fresh bread daily for your family and the benefits are overwhelming. A bread making tip. When you're making your own bread, it is a good idea to add a pinch of cinnamon and cloves as often as possible because both of those are very good detoxes for the body to keep those nasty worms at bay. Here is our daily bread recipe. Four cups of flour, 400 mils of water, one and a half teaspoons of instant dry yeast, a tablespoon of olive oil or butter, which is optional, two teaspoons of honey or molasses, a good pinch of salt. For handmade bread, combine two cups of the flour with the water, salt, yeast, honey and oil and leave to foam for about 10 minutes. Then add your next two cups of flour and knead well. Add a little more flour, if need be, to give it a good dough consistency, not too sticky, just off sticky. Leave it to rise until it doubles in size, then knock back, mold into bread shape or place in bread tin, and bake in a 180 oven, 180 degrees Celsius, for about 30 or 40 minutes. Add variety to this basic recipe by using a combination of flours such as two white, two brown, or three brown and one rye. Also add seeds, nuts, cinnamon, cloves. You can use milk instead of water to make a richer bread. You can also beat an egg or two and then add water to measure your 400 mils for a richer bread. Be adventurous and adjust the water and flour to get a good dough consistency, being dry enough to knead but not too dry and not too sticky. I use the same recipe in my bread maker and alternate between handmade and machine-made bread. I also use this recipe for making rolls, focaccia, pizza dough, just about all my dough needs. <music>